I'm Judge Shadeen Pirro. You're watching a special two-hour edition of Justice. Let's listen more now to President Trump's rally live from Topeka, Kansas. A vote for Steve's opponent. His name is Paul Davis. He's not good. He's not good. You know that. Is a vote for a radical agenda of Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer. And the legendary Maxine Waters. Here in Kansas, his opponent, Paul Davis, voted time after time to raise your taxes and fees. And he voted to give public benefits to illegal aliens. Not good. If you want to stop Nancy Pelosi from becoming Speaker of the House, Nancy, Nancy Pelosi, whoa, you better get out and vote for Steve Watkins, please. A majority of House Democrats have already sponsored a socialist takeover of health care. The Democrats' plan would eviscerate Medicare and eliminate Medicare Advantage for 20 million seniors. We want to protect Medicare. We will, as Republicans, protect Medicare for our great seniors who have earned it and paid for it. And we will always protect Americans with pre-existing conditions, we will take care of our great Americans with pre-existing conditions. Today's Democrats have embraced radical socialism and open borders. If you don't have borders, you don't have a country, folks. You don't have a country. Every single Democrat in the U.S. Senate has signed up for the open borders, and it's a bill. It's called the Open Borders Bill. What's going on? And it's written by, guess who? Diane Feinstein. <laughs> Remember the leaking, right? The leaking Diane Feinstein. Did you leak? Did you leak, Diane? Diane, did you? No, 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 I, uh, no. No! I, I, I didn't. I don't think. Wait. Did we leak? No, he said no. No, we didn't leak. Oh. Was that the worst body language you've ever seen? Was that the worst? No, I, I didn't leak. No, she didn't leak. That's what you're dealing with. If the Democrats' bill ever becomes law, a tidal wave of drugs and crime would pour into our nation like never, ever before. Democrats also support deadly sanctuary cities that release violent predators and bloodthirsty killers like MS-13 into our communities. Republicans believe our country should be a sanctuary for law-abiding Americans, not criminal aliens. And Republicans stand proudly with the brave men and women of ICE, Border Patrol, and law enforcement. They want to defund ICE. Can you believe it? You know how tough ice is? When MS-13 sees ice coming, they say, let's get out of here. But you know what? They can't, because they get caught. They get thrown, and they get thrown the hell out of the country. They can't. They don't like that. The Democrats want to get rid of ice. And these are great Americans. By the way, ice, great Americans. They happen to be tough people. I think we need some tough people. They're tough. MS-13 doesn't like ICE, and that's why I like ICE. But they really are. They're great Americans. They love our country, and they're not treated properly. They're not treated properly. I've seen it in Long Island. They go into a community. I grew up in that vicinity. I know every community out there. And they go into these communities, and these are rough, rough people, MS-13. 
how they even come in and we stop them at the border, but there's so many here from before us, from before us, and our laws are so bad and we're getting them changed, it's tough. That's why we need more Republicans. But they come in and Long Island, we send ICE and they get in there and they get them out and it's like we're liberating a town. In this day and age, it's like in a war where, uh, you know, you, a, a foreign invader, a foreign invader finally is being taken out they're liberating a country or liberating a city or a town. These people are liberating these towns. And you know the story, and you've heard it, and it's all over. They cut people up because they don't want to use bullets. It's too fast, and it's not painful enough. And then when I said, animals, Nancy Pelosi said, how dare you speak that way about a human being? How dare you? This woman just said it to me. She screamed out the word animal. So how dare you call them? They're human beings. They're not. These are animals, folks. These are animals. And we need law enforcement. And we need ICE. And we need Border Patrol. These are great people. And if your community has a problem, don't worry about it. Just give us a call. We'll take care of it. Democrats are also fighting to give welfare and free health care to illegal aliens, paid for by you, the American taxpayer. Thank you very much. Republicans believe that the public benefits must be protected for the truly needy Americans, Americans that need help, not illegal aliens. If you want safety, if you want a border, if you want America to remain a sovereign, great country, then you must organize, mobilize, register, and vote Republican. We need more Republican votes. This election is about safety, and it's also about prosperity. Since the election, we have created over 4.2 million new jobs and lifted almost 4 million Americans off of food stamps. And we've added nearly one half million manufacturing jobs. Think of that. If I ever said that during the camp, look how many, oh man, that you are getting more and more people back there. Look how many reporters. Look. Wow. That's a lot. Wow. Wow. You know what I call it? I call it the Academy Awards. That's the Academy Awards. You know, we're doing great. Our new polls just came out. I had a poll, Rasmussen, 51 or 52. They don't report that. They never report. But you know, and it's much higher than that, because some people, I don't know if I'm happy about this, they say when they don't want to talk about it, that means they're voting for Trump. I don't know, am I supposed to be thrilled? But we'll take it, right? We'll take it. That's what happened in 2016. A lot of people didn't want to talk about it. And the polls just push it down, you know, okay, throw it. But now they learned, they learned their lesson. When they don't talk, they're Trump voters. All action. All action, no talk. African-American unemployment has reached its lowest level in recorded history. African-American poverty has reached its lowest rate ever recorded. By the way, by the way, can you imagine during the debate, if I have those stats, the best unemployment number ever for African Americans, best in terms of poverty ever in history for Africa? How do you win? How do you beat us on that? It's only habit. It's habit. Because for 100 years, African Americans have gone with Democrats, but now they're changing, and they're changing fast, and they're coming with us. Thank you, Kanye West. Thank you, Jim Brown. Big Jim Brown. Thank you, Iron Mike. 
I could go through, we have so many people. Big Jim Brown, we could use him right now in the NFL, right? Great people. Hispanic American and Asian American, likewise, their unemployment rates have also reached all-time historic lows, the lowest. And women's unemployment just fell to 3.6 percent, the lowest rate in 65 years. And we are, as of right now, the world's number one producer of crude oil and natural gas, energy. Number one. Number one. And since I took office, the value of Americans' mutual funds and pension funds has increased by $2.7 trillion. That's your money. That's your money. And your 401ks, you all look like a bunch of geniuses. Thank you, Donald, very much. You're all great investors, right? You're all great investors. That's okay. We've picked up 11, I was saying 10, I was saying 7. We picked up now 11.7. Larry Kudlow said it to me the other day. He said, sir, you're a little low on that number. I said, really? I was using $10 trillion. It's now 11.7 trillion dollars in worth. Eleven, you know what that is? And China was catching us rapidly before I became president, and right now we are going so fast. We are the fastest developing country in the world. Can you believe that? Wow. Fastest in the world. And that's why I say we have a midterm coming up, an election. Historically, whoever's president, I don't know why this works, but whoever's, I guess people get complacent. You know, hey, we just won the presidency. Now, two years later, we have an election, so they're complacent. And then we always win in the next one, which is, as you know, the presidential election. We always win. So far, I'm dreaming of those candidates. I see those candidates before my eyes. Every night before I go to sleep, sometimes while I'm sleeping, I love them so much. Cory Booker. Pocahontas, Pocahontas. I've got more Indian blood in me than Pocahontas, and I have none. I mean, sadly. But I have more than two. They said to her, why do you say you're of Indian heritage? Well, my mother told me I have high cheekbones. That's the answer. Do you have any documentation? No, we don't. Oh, I see. You have high cheekbones. Well, I have high cheekbones, too. Hey, maybe I'm an Indian, and I'm going to do very well. But think of it. This is her reason. The whole thing has been a fraud, but that's okay. You know what? I, I want to be careful. I'm taking out so many of these people. I'm hitting them so hard that they're disappearing. And I don't want to do that. Because I may get somebody that's actually good to run against me. That would not be good. I'll take out all the easy ones. And maybe I'll get stuck with somebody that's actually good. But I don't see any on that side. Well, sleepy Joe Biden, who who ran for president two or three times. You know, they say only twice. I think I remember a third time in there. But he had 1% with an arrow pointing left. That means 1% or less. And then Obama took him off the trash heap. Well, he's one of the people. Remember, he challenged me to a fight. I'd like to take him behind the barn. I'd love that. That, would be that wouldn't last long. That would not last long. last long. Go like this. 
He's down, and he'll never get up. He'll never get up. He will never get up. No, I got to leave their candidates alone. Somebody actually said you're hitting these candidates really hard. Here's a non-candidate, you know, Danang Dick. He's a Danang Dick. That's Blumenthal. He talked about when I was in Da Nang province in Vietnam, and I was fighting up the hill, and men are going left and right of me. They're dying. They're being struck by bullets. But I went back to their rescue. I went back, and I got them. And then I made a second attempt, and bullets are going left and right and over my shoulders, and they're hitting my men. And I used to think, wow, this guy's a pretty brave guy. And then I found out he's a fraud. He never was in Vietnam. <laughs> and he stopped campaigning because there was no way you could win. No way. And because it's Connecticut, where I guess only a Democrat, can you believe this? That's why Connecticut's such a mess right now. <laughs> only a Democrat wins. You got to see it's a mess. General Electric just moved out. That doesn't help. But Donang Dick. And then I see him yesterday talking about a man who's number one at Yale, has like this perfect record, the most incredible record. One of the reasons I picked him, he's like a perfect person. And Donang Dick, who, who said he was a great war hero and he never saw the country. This wasn't like saying, hey, I was in the army. This, was, this, is, this is a guy that said he was charging up Da Nang. Da Nang province, right? Da Nang province. He's up that hill and he's taking bullets left and right. And he never saw the place. He was in the reserves, though, remember that. And he said, I demand honesty. This is true, exact words. I demand honesty, integrity, and I demand that there's no lying going around. And I'm saying, hey, wait a minute, is that, that's the guy that lied about, in the worst, in the history of our country, if you look at it, he lied. And this is one of the people. How bad? And then you have the Feinstein, and you have all the others, and you look at what's going. You don't want those people in office, folks. You've <laughs> got to have great republic. And compare that with what you've seen with John Cornyn, who asked that great question to Diane and got her a little off base, like, you know, John Cornyn of Texas. And Lindsey Graham, who did such a great job. Right. Did a great job. How good was Lindsey? How good was Lindsey? And you know what? He was speaking from the heart. He was speaking. And by the way, took a week. But that extra week was a great thing because it showed no corroboration, no nothing. No, by the way, no nothing. How good was Senator Susan Collins yesterday? Really, really great. And Chuck Grassley, I'll tell you what, Chuck was great. He's got to be very happy with what we did on trade, right, Chuck? From Iowa, great state. And Mitch McConnell, how good. How good. He was tough and smart. He was great. He worked hard. And we got ourselves the finest legal mind, one of the finest human beings. And again, what his family took, the, the horror that they had to endure by these people, like Blumenthal and Cory Booker, who was a disaster as the mayor of Newark, New Jersey. What they had to take was a disgrace. The only reason to vote Democrat is if you're tired of winning, right? <laughs> tired of winning. We want to win, win, win. We never get tired of winning. After years of rebuilding other nations, we are finally rebuilding our nation. You see what's happening. And I just left the United Nations last week, 
And I can tell you, and everybody else can tell you, and even the fake news can tell you, America is respected again. To create more jobs and rising wages, Republicans passed the biggest package of tax cuts and reforms in American history by far. We also passed Veterans Choice, 44 years, giving our veterans the right to see a private doctor. And we pay for it. So they don't have to wait online for 25 days, 38 days, 14 days, six days. They go out and they see a private doctor. They get themselves a good doctor. We pay the bill. It's frankly so simple, but it took 44 years to get it done. We got it done. I'm good at getting it. I'm good at getting it. And we also passed, this is 45 years, the VA accountability law to ensure anyone who mistreats our veterans will be held accountable. You are fired. Get out. And we've secured a record $700 billion, and the next year, $716 billion to rebuild our military and to give our brave warriors their largest pay raise in almost a decade. The Pentagon is now working to create the sixth branch of the American Armed Forces, the Space Force. They're very serious stuff. And it's happening quickly. It's very serious. That's where it's at. You know, you have to know where it's at. Doesn't sound right, but it's right. That's where it's at. Both defense and offense, that's where it's at. I withdrew the United States from the horrible, one-sided Iran nuclear deal. You know, before I became president, I looked at what was happening with Iran. They were taking over the Middle East. They were taking Syria. They were taking Yemen. They were going into Iraq. They were taking everything. Now. They just want to make it. They just want to say they have riots in every city. Since I took over that operation, that horrible, horrible deal, that was a think of it. The previous administration gave Iran $150 billion. And even crazier, they gave them $1.8 billion in cash. Cash. Aeroplanes, aeroplanes full of cash. In fact, I got in. I said, does the President of the United States actually have the power to give away $1.8 in cash? You know what the answer is? It's actually no. They don't. What they did there is a disgrace. They gave them $1.8 in order to have a terrible deal. Well, that was a hostage. They paid a billion eight. They paid a billion eight for hostages. Can you imagine? And we got our hostages back from North Korea. Huh? Zero. And we have a good relationship. And who knows what happens, but I think good things happen. No more missile testing, no more rocket testing, no more nuclear testing. We got the remains of our great, great heroes from 75 years ago back. And they keep coming back. And we got our hostages back. And good things are happening over there. You know what I always say? It's deals. Just before we signed the deal with Canada and Mexico, great deal. I said, who knows? I never like to say, who could you say? It's a deal. Who knows? I like to do it. It takes all the pressure off. Who knows? With North Korea, who knows? But I think we're doing very well, OK?
The fake news says, why aren't you going faster? I said, listen, I just got back three months ago, right? I was there with Kim Jong-un. I was there three months ago. Chairman Kim, they say, why aren't you going faster? I said, what have people done for 75 years? 75. This is three months. And one of the anchors said, why has the president given away so much? And I said, what have I given? I haven't given anything. We got our hostages back for nothing, out of respect. Right? We got our remains back. We got the testing all stopped, including the nuclear testing. I, I said, tell me, what have we given? Well, uh, uh, you, uh, you agreed to meet. Oh, that doesn't cost me very much. I agreed to meet. I like to meet. I like to meet. What the hell do we lose by meeting? I asked the previous administration. Now, that's what I gave away. I agreed to meet. Can you believe it? These people are sick. I agreed to meet. Can you imagine how well we'd do if we actually had fair press? Can you imagine? No, can you imagine? Instead of fake news. I agreed to meet. I'm sorry I agreed to meet. And then they said, right? You know, the rhetoric was extremely tough that first couple of months. And President Obama said, at my meeting with him, he said, the biggest problem we have by far is North Korea. They would have gone to war. Millions and millions of people would have been killed. Millions of people. And I said to somebody in their administration, have you ever talked? Have you ever agreed to meet? Have you ever, like, let's sit down and talk? Well, we haven't thought about Oh, I see. You'll go to war. You're not going to talk? We'll beat anybody. What we have now coming in, I'm telling you, the greatest power we've ever had, the greatest power in the world. You know why I have that? Because I don't want to use it. And when you have it, nobody's going to mess with us, okay? Nobody. I don't want to use it. Greatest power in the world. 716 billion. Greatest power in the world. But we're doing great. And we have recognized the capital of Israel and opened the American embassy in Jerusalem. That's the other story I tell. That's the other story we tell. That's a big one. That's a big, big story. You know why? Because other presidents all said they're going to do it. Many, many presidents. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. Then the pressure goes on them, and they don't do it. And I see why. I don't blame them. Every leader called me up. Don't do it. Please don't do it. Don't do it. You know the story. I've refused to take their phone calls. I said, tell them I'll call them back on Thursday. <laughs> Next week. And I'm signing like on Wednesday. <laughs> Tell them I'm calling them back on Thursday. I look forward to speaking to them. Then I sign the deal, announce the deal. Then I call them back. Yeah, hi, how you doing? What's up? Wow. <laughs> we wanted to talk to you about Israel, but it's a little late. <laughs> and the embassy, which was going to cost over a billion dollars, we built it for about 400000 right? You know that. And the billion would have taken probably 20 years before you ever got the building. And we took a piece of land that we owned, already owned, and it had a building on it. Okay, building. We fixed the building up a little bit. We took the big space in the corner. We used even Jerusalem stone, which is a very expensive era builder. Jerusalem stone is beautiful. How nice is that? And you know, Jerusalem stone in Jerusalem sounds about right. And we got it for the right price. And we built it for less than $500,000. Think of it. And we opened it. It's open now. We have our embassy. So we saved a billion dollars and 20 years. And we have our embassy. We could do that with hundreds of things. For years, you watched as your leaders apologized for America. And now you have a president who is standing up for America. We're standing up for your values. We're standing up for Kansas. And we're standing proudly. We are standing proudly for our great national anthem, right?
And I just helped Canada and the NFL make a deal that they've been trying to make for years. Can you believe it? Canada was taking advantage of the NFL. The NFL couldn't get it done. It took me about two seconds because it's peanuts. It's, it's you know, it's a lot of money, but it's not compared to corn and crops and dairy and milk and cars and steel and everything else. It's peanuts. I say you got to take care of it. It's not right because I want to help American companies. It took me like two minutes, and we got it done. And I got a call from the commissioner of the NFL, and I thought he was calling me to ask me to stop haunting them about standing for the American flag and for our nation. And he didn't. He called me to thank me. He said, the previous administration could not get it done. And you got it done. We didn't even know you were trying to do it. So now they'll have a lot more money to give to their players, and their players will still hate me, but that's OK. Stand for our end. Just as long as they stand. Just as long as they stand for our flag and our anthem, I don't care how they feel about me. But to continue our incredible momentum, you have to get your friends, your family, your neighbors, your co-workers, and get out and vote Republican. We need more people in D.C. We don't have enough. Vote to send Chris Kobach to the governor's mansion and vote to send Steve Watkins to Congress. We always vote for Trump. A vote for Republicans is a vote for lower taxes, less regulation, and more products made right here in the USA. Finally, finally. We want it made here. It's a vote to respect our borders, respect our Constitution, and respect the heroes of law enforcement. And that's what they are. They're our heroes. And a vote for Republicans is a vote to reject the Democrat politics of anger and division and destruction and to reclaim America's true heritage and righteous destiny. We're losing that with these crazy loco people. To everyone in this room tonight, that's a lot of people, to every citizen watching across our land, this is your time to choose. It's a time to choose whether we turn backward to the failure and frustration of the past, or whether we continue forward into a future of American greatness. It's not up to the media. It's not up to the pundits. It's up to you to decide your fate. And remember this. What happened in 2016 and what's happening even more so now, I believe, because I produced, and people see I produced. One of them said he made a lot of promises and he actually produced more than he made promises. I mean, you know, think about it. I did. I did. You have the power with your vote to defend your family, your community, your country and everything we hold sacred and righteous and true. Loyal citizens like you help build this country, and together, we are taking back our country, returning power to everyday great American patriots. The state of Kansas was settled by tough pioneer men and strong women who defied danger and braved the wilderness to build a beautiful life on the plains. Beautiful. 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 Strong women. Strong women. Strong. I'm sorry, fellas. Stronger than the men. I'm sorry, fellas. They didn't have a lot of money. They didn't have a lot of luxury. 
But they all had one thing in common. They loved their families, they loved their country, and they loved their God. These courageous patriots did not shed their blood, sweat and tears, so that we could sit at home while others try to erase their legacy and destroy our proud and great American heritage. For the sake of our freedom and for the sake of our children, we are going to work, we are going to fight, and we are going to win, win, win. We will not bend. We will not break. We will never give in. We will never give up. We will never back down. We will never surrender. And we will always fight on to victory. Because we are American, and our hearts bleed red, white, and blue. We are one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together, we will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you, Kansas. Thank you. Thank you. I always love it. All right, that is uh, President Trump just wrapping up a rally in Topeka, Kansas. Uh, a really uh, very, very positive speech uh, on an incredible day uh, where we witnessed history with an associate justice being uh, uh, confirmed and sworn in to the United States Supreme Court. It's the culmination of one of the most contentious Supreme Court hearings that we've ever seen in American history. And this president, of course, in Topeka, Kansas, talking about all of the great things that have been done, uh, a huge day for him, a huge day for uh, the Republican Party, as he continues to march through the country to get people to support the candidates in their states just prior to the midterm. A fired-up President Trump clearly doing what he does best, just wrapping up that rally speech in Topeka, Kansas. Well, we have a political panel here tonight. CPAC Chairman Matt Schlapp, an NRA TV contributor, former Secret Service agent Dan Bongino, to break it all down tonight. All right, guys. Uh, first of all, I just want to get your take on the huge day that the president had. I mean, you could sense the excitement of the crowd, the excitement of the president today. What do you think, Matt? What I think is interesting is that we had one of the biggest votes that we'll ever see in the United States Senate with Brett Kavanaugh, now Justice Kavanaugh. And you can see how intertwined it is in politics. Because here the president is at, at the rally. What's the number one thing they wanted to hear about? They wanted to hear about this great victory at the Supreme Court. It means that this victory by President Trump with Kavanaugh is going to make Republicans' jobs easier in November. Well, and you know, Dan Bongino, last week you had quite an energized uh, panel discussion with Chris Hahn talking about how horrible Kavanaugh, now Justice Kavanaugh, was treated. Uh, it, this week was an incredible week in terms of the turnaround with the president in Mississippi uh, and and how he then kind of changed the conversation to back to Christine Ford. Uh, what would you say to Chris Hahn, who isn't here tonight? You know, I was disappointed in Chris last week because he's a personal friend of mine, but he did something last week that disgusted me. He attacked and he jumped on this liberal train to destroy this good man. 
Brett Kavanaugh, a patriot. And I was, I mean, a really good man, Judge. I was deeply offended by that. But today, this is a vindication. And Chris, you know what? You know what I got to say? How you like them apples? That's what I got to say. Reminds me of that scene in Goodwill Hunting when he knocks on, you like apples? How you like them apples? Here's what, this was a vindication, Judge. A vindication of, one more point on this. A vindication of Trumpism, and Matt knows it too. Listen, for too long, we've been in a boxing match, a political boxing match with a left wearing brass knuckles, and we're appealing to the ref the media, please tell him to take the brass knuckles off. Trump took the gloves off. He's fought oh, yeah. back. We got tax cuts, economic growth, Gorsuch, Kavanaugh. Trumpism's been vindicated. Take a victory lap tonight. It's unbelievable. In fact, all my viewers, uh, the president is going to be calling in in the next few minutes. I'm sure after he gets out of the arena there in Topeka, Kansas, we'll be able to talk to him. Uh, and uh, on, I think one of the most exciting days of his presidency. I mean, who could have predicted that this would actually happen, yeah. Matt? I mean, it was the, the, uh, Brett Kavanaugh went from this great circuit court judge right. to a, a, a guy involved in gang rapes, a sexual predator. I mean, was, I think some of the darkest days they had to be of Brett Kavanaugh's life. And now he's back up and just sworn in as an associate justice of the Supreme Court. And it shows you how our politics has changed because the only reason that happened is that Brett Kavanaugh went to that hearing in the Senate and connected with the American people and honestly and aggressively pushed back on these scurrilous charges. It was that moment that sealed his fate so that he would actually be confirmed in the Senate. And I think there were people across this country who were so enthralled, I think maybe even people in the White House there as well, by the, the sheer oh, yeah. honest, the honesty and the emotion of all this, because every American felt the pain of this. They know what it's like when someone gets railroaded. And he was the personification of great well, injustice. You know, it, was, it wasn't just being railroaded, uh, Matt. And I'll go to you, Don, uh, Dan. Uh, uh, it was about eliminating the presumption of innocence. Right. It was about a mob rule dictating that all women should be believed and men should just shut up. My fear was that Lady Justice was not only, you know, having the bandage ripped off and told which way to go, but that she was being thrown out of the game totally. And that was frightening, I think, to a lot of Americans who believe in the system, believe in the, the presumption of innocence. And I think it may have brought out people who would never have really cared about a Supreme Court nomination. Right, but Judge, the reason we won here is important. What you just said is absolutely accurate. The left has done this before. They lob a grenade onto the political battlefield, and that grenade ends in ist. Racist, misogynist. In this case, it was rapist, which was disgusting. Wow. And in the past, a lesser president judge would have backed away immediately and said, hey, judge, for the better of the country, step aside. Trump said, no, not today. And Matt hit the nail on the head. When Brett Kavanaugh got up there and said, not today, not on my watch. I may not sit on the Supreme Court, but you're not going to crap on my reputation and decades of good work for this country and my family. Matt mm -hmm. is absolutely right. Okay. Trump was there for him. He knew he was there for him. And the corner turned, and the American people were energized, and the all Democrat right, all air right. got out of that balloon I'm going to interrupt you, Dan. And Dan, I'm going to interrupt you. As I said, we have the president uh, calling in, and I understand uh, that joining me now by phone is the president of the United States, Donald Trump. Mr. President? Well, Dan sounded very good, very good. We appreciate Dan. <laughs> Yeah, Dan, Dan is a great guy, but Mr. President, I must tell you that this is one of the most significant days of your presidency. It was a whirlwind week, and I, I just want to know, how do you feel tonight? I don't know. It, I think... Okay, we're gonna, all right, we're going to keep going to the panel. So then, Matt, I'll ask you um, just to follow up on, on what Dan was saying. Other presidents would have bailed. I don't think there's any question. And I, I'm going to ask the president about this when we, when we get the connection back. This is the right thing. This, is, this was history. When a, when a nominee 
hits the rocks. Like, clearly, Brett Kavanaugh, as unfair as it was, but he hit the rocks. Yeah, he did. And when people heard Dr. Ford speak, I can't tell you, my phone just blew up. People said, boy, this He's sounds credible. This sounds credible. They've, he's got to drop Kavanaugh. And I told everyone who called and said, you've got to listen to the full day. And I think the president did something. He broke the back of the left on this idea that they can just throw out charges, put a lot of dust in our eyes, and presidents will back off. They're now dealing with somebody who's not a politician. He's not going to back off. Yeah. And this means that when we get our next opening, they don't know what to do. They've tried everything in their bag of tricks. Well, Dan, you know, I think that, that what Matt and you are both saying is that we not only have a president who's a counterpuncher, but we have a president who is in a position to just ignore all of the rules and just go with his gut and go with his instinct. And I believe that that's what brought us to the Kavanaugh confirmation today and his ascension to the United States Supreme Court. But do you think that the left has learned that the more ridiculous they get, the, the less credible they're going to be to the American people? No, they haven't learned a damn thing. Uh, you know, they played along while the entire government was weaponized to take down Donald Trump. Uh, frankly, he gave him the double-barreled middle finger. He, I mean, he won anyway. He's now the president. And, Judge, there's a reason we are where we are with Donald Trump. He didn't spend his entire life running for office learning how to sell right. out. He built stuff. You have to build stuff. You either see a building or you don't. He had to deal with union bosses, New York City, uh, you know, government people trying to shake him down sometimes. He had to deal with the worst of the worst, and he yep. had to build the damn building. Politicians learn to sell out their entire careers. That's why he is who he is, and that's why Brett Kavanaugh is sitting on the Supreme Court right now. All right, I want to remind my viewers that we were on with the president uh, just a few moments ago, uh, and we're trying to get the connection back. So uh, don't go anywhere. He's, uh, he, he is trying to get back to us, as I understand it. Now, um, Matt, you know Brett Kavanaugh. I do. Okay. How do you go through the emotional roller coaster that he went through, and when he gets to today, being sworn in, I mean, I had chills. I mean, I, I, I'm a lawyer. I mean, I was also a judge, but I had chills. Right. How do you think, is it bittersweet for him? Look, I served with him throughout 9-11, throughout all the heady issues around wars. Uh, we had amazing days. You do in almost every White House, but especially around those things. And he is a very unflappable person. The, the person people saw in the Senate pushing back aggressively. Uh, that's actually, that was just, that was honest emotion to these charges. But the Brett Kavanaugh that's at work every day, he is steady Eddie. The person that I think is also amazing is his wife and his kids. Ashley, another great friend, she just hung in there. They're people of faith, Judge. They believe that God has a plan for their lives. He, I'm sure he believes that the skills that God gave him are to be uh, in the law. Oh, and, as and, well they will. And, and I think we're going to see that as, as a justice he is going to not use his personal opinions, not his faith. He's going to read the words of the Constitution, and consequences be damned. And if people want to criticize him, I think well, he'll be a lot like Clarence Thomas. I don't think he's going to worry about it because he knows yeah. he's going to do his job. Yeah, well, and you know, Dan, he has clearly been uh, raked over the coals. Uh, this is a, a justice who, uh, as, as Susan Collins, Senator Susan Collins, made clear yesterday uh, in her brilliant remarks in the Senate, uh, who relies on what we call stare decisis and, and precedent, and who understands that under Griswold versus Connecticut and, and Roe versus Wade, that there are certain things like privacy that Griswold, uh, um, you know, established that have to be followed. Do you think that that is something that's going to affect the midterms as we go forward? You know what I think is going to affect the midterms more on this judge? Um, honestly, just candidly speaking, the, the really visceral, disgusting attacks on Kavanaugh, who was, by the way, a brilliant pick, a brilliant pick strategically. I don't want to sell that short. Think about this, right? President Trump had to understand that he was not, even though Gorsuch was not the, the most pleasant confirmation, this was going to be a lot uglier because it was Kennedy's seat on the swing vote. They knew Kavanaugh exactly. was a conservative, but they knew he was a Bush guy as well. This was a brilliant pick by Trump because, Judge, what did it do? 
It galvanized factions of the Republican Party, let's be candid, right. that have been at each other's throats. Trump yeah. always gets sold short on his strategy. This was oh, a brilliant he, pick. Kavanaugh was probably the only guy who would get through right now under these circumstances. And the truth, Dan, that, that you articulated so well, the result is that the Republican Party going into the midterms is now more unified than it's been in, in decades. So it was brilliant on so many levels. Uh, and, Look, even with women, Judge. All the, the, the Republican surge and the energy that you see in all these polls, you actually see the Democrats have screwed up their double-digit advantage with women. You know why? Women are moms. Women are sisters. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're wives. They saw this as an unfair treatment of any man in their life. It could happen to any man in their exactly. life. And the Democrats have screwed it up even with women. That's right. And, and of course, to my viewers, we're still waiting on President Trump to call in live any moment now. But let's talk more about the president's rally tonight. A very exciting times in Topeka, Kansas, especially if you're a Donald Trump supporter. Let's go live now to Dove McElway in Topeka, where the president just wrapped up. Hi, Judge Janine, and I, th I think you said it right. This is arguably the high point of the Trump presidency to date. And the reason being is he solidified his legacy for potentially decades to come with the appointment now of two conservative uh, justices on the high court uh, who will obviously demonstrate people hope uh, that conservatism in the years going. And certainly, if that is the case, it has moved the court in a rightward tilt in ways that has not been uh, reflected in literally decades. And the crowd here in this arena recognize that. We all know that uh, the President Trump is occasionally fudged numbers about crowd size in some of the arenas. This place, Landon Arena, holds 10,000 people. There was not a single seat to be had here tonight. Every seat filled here. And the enthusiasm level uh, was reflected in that as well. They knew what was happening here. I was here about uh, early this afternoon when the vote reached the threshold, 50 to 48. Uh, it was about half full at that time. The President was uh, in the air at the time. But people were getting that news on their cell phone via text messages via emails via telephone calls and there was an uproarious thunder of applause at that point in time and then when the president himself came out here to reaffirm that news it, there was just thunderous applause i want you to listen to a little bit of it do we have that Okay, apparently we, we do not have that. But it, it again also demonstrates how Donald Trump has completely upended conventional political thinking. His style of counterpunching even reflected in the defense of Judge Kavanaugh himself. We've learned now from a New York Times report that Don McGahn, the White House counsel, pulled him aside okay, after Doug, uh, Christine cut you Ford's off. testimony. Joining me yeah. now by phone, the President of the United States, Donald Trump. Mr. President, thanks for getting back to us. Dean. Hi. Okay, so let's get how, right to how it. Is, how is your reception now, Janine? They had yeah, a security reception situation, but never, right, never sounds on, too good. Is it okay? It's okay, and you're you're on air right now, Mr. President. So good, let's I like get that. to it. Good. With you, okay. I like being on air with your beautiful. Well, rating. thank you. I appreciate that, Mr. President. Even uh, you know, aside from the, the, the some of the protesters uh, in Washington, there is an excitement. We have a Supreme Court uh, justice. It's one of the highlights of your uh, your administration so far. You have to be very very excited about what you accomplished, and you accomplished it. Well, I am very excited, and, you know, the protesters were a very small group, a tiny group of people. I just left tens of thousands of people in Kansas, and, you know, it's uh, amazing what's going in the country, and we have a great new Supreme Court justice, Janine, as you know very well. I do. And, Mr. President, you know, a lot of people, uh, other presidents, might have pulled the plug. And we were talking about this while we were trying to reconnect with you. There were a lot of other conservative justices that you could have said, okay, you know, let's try somebody else. And it wouldn't have been the first time a president did that. But you stuck with Kavanaugh during his darkest moments. Why? Well, for one thing, it would have been very unfair to him, if you think about it. He's a highly respected man. What the Democrats did was disgraceful. Uh, these uh, things happened that just came out of the wind. There was no corroboration. There was no anything, Janine. This is a high-quality, brilliant man. He'll be a phenomenal Supreme Court justice. And it was my honor to stick. And I know that. A lot of people told me that. They said, well, we'll switch. You'll never get anybody like this. This is a very 
very outstanding person and individual with an incredible family, and it would have been very unfair to him. What they did was disgraceful, what the Democrats did. And you saw that group with Blumenthal, who falsified his service in Vietnam, and a terrible mayor of Newark, New Jersey, Cory Booker, and, you know, the whole group, Diane Feinstein, who, in my opinion, leaked the papers. Uh, it was terrible what was happening and what was happening. And very unfair, so I did stick to me, yes. And I'm very All happy right, and I you did. Know Mr. President, you have a very uncanny instinct. You have a gut sense of things. And you were very disciplined uh, after Christine Ford came out and the left was going wacky. But there was one point where you pivoted at a rally in Mississippi uh, just a few days ago. You went off script. And some people said that you were extremely unkind uh, to Christine Ford. But what, what was it that got you to pivot from your restraint about her and to fight for Kavanaugh at that point? Well, there were a lot of things happening that weren't correct. They weren't true. And there were a lot of things that were left unsaid. And I thought I had to even the playing field because it was very unfair to judge. Now I can, you know, very nicely say Justice Kavanaugh. Right, and, right. Uh, it was a very unfair situation. So I even the playing field. And once I did that, it started to sail through. He was treated well, very, very unfairly, Janine. And, and Mr. President, you know, when you say it started to sail through, even the Washington Post, I'm going to repeat that, even the Washington Post, top of the fold today, talks about the fact that when you went off script and you went after Christine Ford, saying nothing that wasn't already true, talking about her uh, uh, memory failures regarding the fundamentals of her assault, they said it was a turning point to victory, that when you did that, you turbocharged the momentum behind Kavanaugh. When his fate was most in doubt, I mean, there's no question that he has to turn around uh, in the country and recognize that what you did was instinctive, it was guttural, and you did it, and it, you won. Well, I think it was a very important moment. It was a, a very big turning point, as the Washington Post was actually, shockingly, uh, they said something that was very positive. <laughs> and I'm very proud of it, because we have a very... We're going to have a great, great justice of the Supreme Court for many years. And I fought hard to make sure that he got on. And you're going to see what happens. You're going to see how great he will be and will become. I have no doubt about it at all. All right. So coming out of this, should there be consequences, Mr. President, to those people who promoted falsehoods? When you look at someone like that lawyer Avenatti, who, uh, you know, the allegations that, that he was promoting when he brings out this alleged victim were so preposterous that they dissipated on their own. Um, should this person be held uh, 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 for the, the falsehoods, not just in terms of grievances with the uh, Bar Association, but even beyond that? Well, he made false accusations about me on another matter, totally false, a joke, when uh, it's just a disgrace that they're able to do it. I'd love to see our libel laws get toughened up so you could take people and sue them. Exactly. But he made... The same thing, totally false statements. You look at what happened, and yes, I think they should be held liable. I would say they should be held to the highest standard. You can't go around, and whether it's making up stories or making false statements about such an important position, you can't do that. You destroy somebody's life. And yeah. there were many, many false things that were said about a very fine man and would, would have destroyed his family if this didn't happen. And it all came together in the end, and people realized it was false accusation, false statement. It was really something very interesting and actually very nice to see, because he suffered, Janine. That was really yeah. unfair. I watched that very closely, and he suffered with false statements made about him, things that never happened. Did the Democrats make a tactical mistake that worked to uh, Republicans' advantage, unfortunately, with Brett Kavanaugh as a sacrificial lamb, who, who I believe, and, and I'm just going to say it again, the, the turnaround was you in Mississippi. But did, the, did they make a tactical mistake, and is their anger going to carry them to uh, the midterms in a positive way? Well, I think they overplayed their hand. I think they were very dishonest with the leak. 
and other things that they did. Even look at the lawyers representing certain people. They're right out of the Democrat playbook. They've represented right. others that are Democrats. That's what they do. How did they end up with all these lawyers that are always the same ones? And I won't even go into names, but I think they overplayed their hand. And I can tell you that the enthusiasm and the love and the, the, mm -hmm. the feeling in the Republican Party right now is higher than I've ever seen it. And you see Fantastic. polls that are going up like rocket ships, races that are going to be won by margins on races, frankly, that the Republicans wouldn't have won. And now they're leading and they're just better. We need more votes so that we can cut taxes even more so that we can do things that they will never do. They're going to open borders. And crime is going to pour in. We want to have no crime. We want to have borders where you come into the country legally. You come in through a legal process and so many things. The enthusiasm for the Republican Party is the strongest I've ever seen it, Janine. And it happened well, all over the last two to three weeks. All right, and and it, if you're if you're joining us, I'm Judge Janine Pirro. Uh, you're joining Justice. Uh, we are having a conversation. It is the top of the hour with the President of the United States. I'm going to continue that conversation, Mr. President. Continuing with, with the discussion, you said that Murkowski will never recover from voting no on Kavanaugh, and then she kind of neutralized it by saying she was neutralized with the uh, the senator uh, Deer, I believe, whose daughter was. Getting married. Uh, what's going to happen to her in 2022? I don't know what's going to happen to her. I thought it was a very, very sad vote. I thought it was very, frankly, disgraceful. And I appreciate that a Democrat, Joe Manchin, came and he voted mm -hmm. uh, in favor of uh, Justice Kavanaugh. And that was a good thing. But uh, that was very disappointing. The people of Alaska, I had tremendous success in Alaska. And what I've done for them with Anwar, which is one of the biggest yeah. uh, drilling sites in the world. Ronald Reagan tried to get it approved. Bush tried to get it approved. Everybody tried to get it approved for close to 50 years. I got it approved. It means trillions of dollars. And I'm not equating one thing with the other at all. But I've done so much for Alaska. I was shocked to see her vote. Absolutely yeah. shocked. And frankly, so were other Republicans. It was a very sad day, I think, for her. And I think it will go down as a sad day for her because he's going to become a great Supreme Court justice. Yes. And, and with respect to Susan Collins and the speech that she made on the Senate floor yesterday, which she's been receiving kudos from everyone, they say that Senator Susan Collins is now receiving death threats. Uh, and, you know, I'm going to show some of the video uh, of people uh, who continue to disrupt outside the Senate uh, floor as they voted today. What can we do about this? What kind of protection are United States senators going to get in the this rough and tumble left that seems to have lost all sense of law and order? Well, you receive threats on both sides, but I will tell you, Susan Collins was a star. What she did was incredible. I spoke to her yesterday. What she said yeah. and the way she said it was brilliant, and it really covered it. She has, from the beginning, really liked Brett Kavanaugh. She had respect for his incredible genius, his, him as a scholar him as a, you know, great person of the law. Nobody knows it better. And she respected that. I know, I mean, she respected it right from the beginning. And she wanted to make sure that she was right on every other subject, including outside influence that came in. And in the end, she went through probably as carefully as anybody. She went through every paper, every document. And I thought her statement yesterday was absolutely brilliant. And we're very... It proud of her and I'll tell you what she's more popular now than she's ever been and she's she's always been good but she is more popular now Janine than she's ever been you know, one of the things that she referenced, Mr. President, was that there was dark money, that's a quote, dark money opposing this Kavanaugh nomination. What do you think she meant by that? Well, I think I'd rather let her explain it, but it's a very, very serious thing going on yeah. with respect to this nomination. And the Democrats know he's so good, they just didn't want him there. And they would have fought others also, by the way, but they did not want him there. 
He is uh, great in every way. And he's central casting. I mean, this is a man yes. that was born for the position. I heard his name 10 years ago. They used to talk about he will someday be a Supreme Court justice. That was long before I thought of running for president, frankly. I used to hear his name as somebody that really should be on the Supreme Court. And that's what I did. I put him on the Supreme Court. And you, uh, it's going to be, I really think it's a great day for our country. Oh, a lot of people are sharing in this celebration, Mr. President. Do you think, though, when you spoke to him, of course, do you think it was bittersweet for him? Well, I know this. Uh, it was going to be very easy, and I picked him also for that reason. I said, this man is so good in every way, on a personal basis, on an intellectual basis, on a scholarly basis in schools, uh, the highest grades, the highest marks, first to this last. I said, this will be an easy one. And they <laughs> fabricated stories about him to make him look as bad as possible. Their fabrication. Uh, had no bearing in truth, and it was really very difficult. And I'm really happy that we all stuck it out. You know, you could say I stuck it out, but he stuck it out also, and that took courage because what they did to him and his family, Janine, was horrible. Yeah, yeah. It's a tough thing, especially when you have little girls. I, I want to move on to something that you talked about at the rally, Mr. President. And you talked about a uh, sixth branch of the armed uh, forces, the Space Force. What is the Space Force? Well, Jeanine, as we advance, space is becoming more and more important for defense. And that means defense and offense. And if it's going to be a part of the Air Force or one of our other forces, frankly, it's never going to be out front. It needs its own identity. And we're doing Space Force. The generals agree with me 100 percent. And so much of our defense and offense will be related to space. So we're setting up a new branch of the armed forces that's taking place very rapidly. Everybody agrees with it. All right. And, and uh, if Melania, who was in Africa today, I think in Egypt at the uh, right. in Giza at the That's pyramids, right. she uh, she looked so phenomenal. Uh, I agree. Her, her I agree. visit she there. Was, we're very proud of her. She was in four African countries. She went to, today. She was actually at the pyramids and she's coming yes. home. She'll be home very early tomorrow morning. And she did a fantastic job. She's a great first lady. She's representing our country so well. And people love Melania, and they're all very proud of her. Well, your numbers have certainly gone up. Uh, but I must tell you, her numbers are even higher. And she is such a, uh, a classy first lady. It's always great looking at her and listening to her. Mr. President, I am sure you have a lot of things to celebrate tonight. I am hoping that as we go toward the midterms, that, the, uh, 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 that we'll be able to, uh, to, to get the results of this uh, successful or feel the results of this successful momentum for your party, although I suspect expect the Democratic anger is going to be out there, too. Uh, last question, which one wins? Well, I think the Republicans are going to do very well. We need some more. You know, we have these tiny majorities, tiny. If somebody catches a cold, Janine, it's like we have to wait till they come back. Uh, we, ha we need more votes to get it all done. We're building the wall as we speak, uh, but we need, I want to get it all at one time because we can have it done very quickly. And so many other things. But for the most part, we've done almost everything. We've, we're building the military. We have all of the money we need. That was very tough. That was massively more than the wall. The wall is very small by comparison. But we've done so much, and we're so happy about it. We're doing a great job for the American people, and it is my honor to do that. I'm very happy about it. All right. Mr. President, we thank you very much for joining Justice this evening. I think it's time you celebrated a little, although knowing you, you'll probably just go back to work. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Janine. Thank you. All right. And breaking tonight, you just saw President Trump live in Kansas, and then you just heard him live right here on Justice, reacting to Brett Kavanaugh's confirmation to the Supreme Court and more.
Hello and welcome now to this special edition of Justice Live from the nation's capital. I'm Judge Janine Pirro. Thanks so much for being with us on this historic night in America. And thanks to all of you for once again making justice number one last weekend and keeping liars, leakers, and liberals on the New York Times bestsellers list. Who knew? And tonight, if you missed my exclusive interview with President Trump that just wrapped, we will air highlights again later in the show. Plus, we'll have brand and a reaction to today's confirmation of Brett Kavanaugh and to the president's rally in Kansas from Kellyanne Conway, Dan Bongino, Matt Schlapp, and Congressman Darrell Issa. A great and exciting show tonight. But first, the president of the United States took a victory lap in Topeka, Kansas tonight, and you saw it live right here. Let's take a quick look at the highlights. I stand before you today on the heels of a tremendous victory for our nation, our people, and our beloved Constitution. Just a few hours ago, the U.S. Senate confirmed Judge Brett Kavanaugh Brett Kavanaugh is a man of great character and intellect. He's a totally brilliant scholar who has devoted his life to the law. He is a loving husband, a devoted father, and a faithful public servant, and he always has been. What he and his wonderful family endured at the hands of Democrats is unthinkable. It's unthinkable. They threw away and threw aside every notion of fairness, of justice, of decency, and of due process. Nobody's seen anything like it. But each of you will have a chance in just four weeks to render your verdict on the Democrats' conduct at the ballot box. If Democrats are willing to cause such destruction in the pursuit of power, just imagine the devastation they would cause if they ever obtained the power they so desperately want and crave. You don't hand matches to an arsonist. And you don't give power to an angry left-wing mob, and that's what they've become. Under Republican leadership, America is booming. America is thriving. America is winning. Because we are finally putting America first. We are putting President Trump rallying the base in Topeka. Let's go back live now to Doug McElway, who was at that rally in Topeka, Kansas. Uh, Doug, okay, back with you. Well, that's a tough act to follow, the President of the United <laughs> States. And I can't really add anything to what you guys were just discussing a few minutes ago, but I can reiterate it. And I think, I think you hit the nail on the head with the observation that this Mississippi rally, which was so widely disparaged across the media and by Democrats and Republicans in Washington, was, was a seminal changing moment in, in this whole affair over uh, Kavanaugh. And what it demonstrates, again, is how the President has completely upended uh, conventional political thinking in this country with the counterpunch. And even Brett Kavanaugh himself used the counterpunch after the formal hearing was done and he had a chance to respond to these allegations and came forward with his defense, that very emotional defense. Most media observers, uh, most court analysts said it was not reflective of good judicial temperament. We had a former Supreme Court justice saying it was a disqualifying characteristic, not good judicial temperament. But there are others who said it's what saved Kavanaugh's skin. It's what saved his nomination process. And then the president went to this rally in Mississippi where he actually dared to confront the accuser's testimony here. And it was a reminder to many, many Americans. It was, it was something that was disparaged widely among Democrats in Washington, disparaged widely among Republicans in Washington. But among the Republican base, it was taken 
with open arms. In the aftermath of that rally, we saw contributions uh, to the RNCC uh, mm -hmm. go up by over 1,000 percent. I think uh, Dana Perino reported that today. We saw conservative never Trumpers join uh, Trump diehard supporters together for the first time in his presidency. Uh, what we're seeing here is that the, the counterpunch truly, truly does work, Judge Nate. And, and, you know, uh, Doug, I, I have to tell you, as, as we were speaking before we got the president on, it was the president's selection of someone who had worked in the Bush administration, which, again, was a brilliant move, that kind of, you know, coalesced all the Republicans yeah. behind this candidate. And uh, right. uh, the turning point, uh, as you say, and I agree, and, and even yeah. the Qua and, and Washington and, Post. Yeah. Right. The, the one thing I would add to all that, the thing to watch for over the next 30 days, though, is can Republicans maintain uh, that momentum? There are some who feel that maybe it peaked today and it'll dwindle slightly over the next 30 days while Democratic anger, let's not forget the women who are enraged over this confirmation right now, will they be able to, uh, you know, mount their forces up, build the momentum where they are able to retain or take over control of, of the House, at which point uh, everything changes. All the Republican Investigations end to be replaced with democratic investigations of such things as uh, Judge Kavanaugh's past, a potential impeachment attempt of Judge Kavanaugh, uh, and, and many, many investigations into the Trump agenda, uh, 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 Trump cabinet members, you name it. It will the, the ground game will change entirely. So that's what this is all about, and that's why the president made this appearance in uh, Topeka today, and why he will be traveling all across the country to these battleground states until. The midterm election day, November sixth. Well, and and Doug McElway, you are absolutely right. The you know the question coming out of this: How long can the Republicans maintain this enthusiasm? Will it take them through the midterms? Yeah. Anyway, Doug McElway, thanks so much for being with us tonight. My pleasure. Good All to be right. with you. And President Trump's right-hand woman, counselor to the president, Kellyanne Conway, with her take on today's history-making day in Washington, as well as live reaction to my interview with the president on this special edition of Justice. It rolls on as Kellyanne joins me next. Don't go away. Remember the leaking, right? The leaking Diane Feinstein. Did you leak? Did you leak, Diane? Diane, did you? No, 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 I don't. No, I, I, I didn't. I don't think. Wait, did we leak? No, he said no. No, we didn't leak. Oh, was that the worst body language you've ever seen? Welcome back to Justice. President Trump having some fun with Democrat Senator Dianne Feinstein at tonight's rally in Topeka. He was in a great mood, and why not? It is truly a historic night for our country as our 114th Supreme Court Justice, Associate Justice, Judge Brett Kavanaugh, was sworn in just a short time ago. Joining me now with reaction to it all, counselor to the president, uh, Kellyanne Conway. Kellyanne, one of the things that you said, which I thought was so appropriate, uh, a quote of yours in an article today, it said, today uh, and the, the uh, confirmation of Kavanaugh, of Judge Kavanaugh, now Justice Kavanaugh, is a crowning achievement of his presidency, of the President Trump's presidency. Why? There's no question. And it's Justice Kavanaugh, it's Justice Gorsuch, and 26 U.S. Circuit judges. It is truly a part of President Trump's legacy, and he's not even been there for two years. He promised on the campaign trail that he would appoint uh, constitutionalist judges who don't make up the laws they go along, who are impervious to political machinations, and he's delivered on that promise. And I think that much of the much of the credit here also has to be shared with Leader McConnell and those in the Senate who saw through exactly what this is: hyperpartisanship, hysteria, dark money, perhaps, but really a lot of a lot of dark language. And I'm so proud of Justice Kavanaugh. For sticking with it. Many people and many presidents, Janine, most other presidents, really would have pulled the nomination and said, look, it's not good for you, it's not good for your family, it's not good for the country. They both stuck with it. That's the message to everybody's children tonight, too. You don't let yourself be bullied and lied about and insulted. You don't give in to the hysteria. You fight back if you know that you're innocent. And he did, and he's sitting on the Supreme Court. He'll be at work on Monday or Tuesday.
You know, I have chills as, as you say it, Kelly. And you know, you're, you're, we're both lawyers. Um, one of the things that frightened me, um, you know, as someone who's tried rape cases and, and decided what cases should go forward, was the idea that as women they should unequivocally be believed, and that that men should just call it a day. It was the upending of everything that you and I learned in law school about the presumption of innocence, and it frightened me. And I honestly believe that it frightened a lot of people in this country. This dictatorial, you must believe her, irrespective of the fact that there's no corroboration. Not that you need it, but once you allege it, you got to prove it. They saw that happening in real time. And if Americans were as gullible and naive and impressionable as many of the Democrats on the Senate Judiciary Committee think that we are, then the outcome here may have been different. Do you realize that in the supplemental hearing featuring Judge Kavanaugh, after he had testified for 33 hours and already answered 1,200 written questions, already produced over a million documents, do you realize that very few of those Democrats, if any, Janine, mentioned the Constitution? They held up his yearbook. They didn't talk, they didn't mention any of his 300 judicial opinions as a sitting judge in the D.C. Circuit. They showed a yearbook passage and quoted from it. So what you're saying is important. People should know that him sitting on the Supreme Court tonight is also a vote for the continuation of due process, presumption of innocence, and the fact that we don't line up according to our gender, that all women are victims, all men are perpetrators. It's horrible. And I'm glad that the good guys won here. Well, and, and the, the, the idea of looking at, at victims through political lenses uh, as opposed That's to right. truthful lenses is, is, is frightening. Even, even the people who are maybe sitting on a jury, I mean, you know, it's got to be based on the facts, but, but I want to keep moving from that. In addition to that, we Jean, may, saw... may I say one thing about sure. that? I th no, I think what you said is incredibly important. Let's not leave that point. Most people in this country don't want to be part of the political process when it comes to something as personal as a, a sexual assault experience that they've had. And so to politicize that in this way, really for many women across this country who don't want to come forward and don't want to be part, don't want their own grief to be politicized, it added insult to injury for many of them. It was very obvious that the Democrats were using Christine Ford, sitting on that letter for six weeks, leaking it, not allowing her to testify privately in California, giving her the cameras and the Klieg lights. They certainly used Brett Kavanaugh. But they're also using many sexual assault victims who want to keep their stories private and not make them public and not be part of this political wreckage and shrapnel. And that really is a shame. And I think that did incense and infuriate and engage many Americans also. Well, you're, you're so right about that, uh, Kellyanne Conway. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. I know you have a very busy thank night. You, we Jean. appreciate your stepping Great out to show. talk with us. Thank you, Kelly. Great interview with the president. Well, thank you. And Republican Congressman Daryl Issa Dan Bongino, match lap still ahead. Plus, in case you miss it, you'll hear my more of my exclusive interview uh, with the president in just a few minutes. Stay with us. The only reason to vote Democrat is if you're tired of winning, right? <laughs> tired of winning. We want to win, win, win. We we'll never get tired of it. <laughs> President Trump giving a rousing speech tonight in Kansas, hitting on a number of major topics. And joining me now with reaction to the president's speech and the historic Senate vote to confirm Judge Brett Kavanaugh to the Supreme Court, California Republican Congressman Darrell Issa, who is here on set with me. All right, uh, Congressman, what's your take on what happened today with Kavanaugh? Well, I could be glib and I could say they didn't do a complete uh, investigation because, of course, they don't know at what age he was potty trained. Yeah. <laughs> but, but short of that, this is the most thorough over-investigation ever. We now have a justice on the Supreme Court who's been over-investigated by, uh, by the Senate, disparaged by the Senate, and I'm confident he will go and he will put that behind him. He'll close the door 
and conduct himself in the way he has on the D.C. Circuit Court, and that's good for America. You know, what's interesting, um, uh, Congressman, as you talk about that, is this man was taken on such an emotional uh, roller coaster from the Citadel down to the dungeon of being a gang rapist and a sexual predator. Uh, it, I mean, it is such a drop. Um, it had to be bittersweet for him tonight. Well, if he ever has to stand in judgment over elected officials, at least he'll know how we feel. He will be the only person on the court that's ever faced that, Clarence Thomas to a lesser extent, mm -hmm. uh, but never anything close to this. And, uh, and that's really what's amazing about uh, his confirmation with, uh, uh, obviously, Joe Manchin, a Democrat voting for him, uh, is that he got through. He got through exactly the way someone uh, would expect, which is the Democrats never wanted another person on the court. And we could have put the late Mother Teresa there, and they would have rejected her. What, what about um, the fact that he was so trashed? He rises above it? I think he rises above it. Uh, what, what, one of the things I found amazing, it's, most of the public won't read it, but uh, 600 and some uh, uh, law professors wrote that he was disqualified because of how he conducted himself when he answered the, question. the accusations of multiple attempted rapes. Mm -hmm. Now. It's beyond belief that you, you get disqualified, not based on a decade of, uh, mm -hmm. of sitting on the court with exactly the right demeanor, but responding the way a husband and a father uh, and an upright citizen would do when you accuse him of multiple crimes. Of which there is absolutely not an iota of evidence other than a very credible claim, but that was contradicted by everyone she said was her alibi and her corroborating witness. Um, do you fear, I mean, you're going to be leaving, and... Uh, uh, you know, we're going to miss you in Congress. We're going to miss you having you on justice, but so maybe you'll come back. I mean, do you fear where this country is right now with this mob rule, this this mentality of get in their face by Congress people saying, you see someone, push them, get in their face? You know, until that goes goes away, we're going to be exactly where we have been off and on for a while. But, Judge, you know, it's amazing to me, the America forgot that when George W. Bush was elected, 18 years ago, the beginning of my elected uh, time in Congress, I saw people turn their backs at his inaugural. I saw members of Congress look me in the eye and say, he's appointed, not elected. We have, for some reason, periodically, episodically, lost our real belief that we serve America first. And then we serve our party sometime later. We've got to get back to that. And there are a few people, Joe Manchin was one of them, that do that. All right, uh, Congressman Darrell Issa, thanks so much for spending your time with us Thank this you. evening. And Matt Schlapp and Dan Bongino can't wait to weigh in on all of this again. They're standing by. Plus, you're going to hear some of my wide ranging exclusive interview with the president from just a few moments ago. Next. President Trump just wrapping up his rally in Kansas and his exclusive interview with me. The first since Judge Kavanaugh's confirmation. Take a look at part of that interview. But Mr. President, even, uh, you know, aside from the, 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 some of the protesters, uh, in Washington there is an excitement. We have a Supreme Court uh, justice. It's one of the highlights of your, uh, your administration so far. You have to be very, very excited about what you accomplished, and you accomplished it. Well, I am very excited, and, you know, the protesters were a very small group, a tiny group of people. I just left tens of thousands of people in Kansas, and, you know, it's uh, amazing what's going in the country, and we have a great new Supreme Court justice, Janine, as you know very well. I do. And, Mr. President, you know, a lot of people, uh, other presidents, might have pulled the plug, and we were talking about this while we were trying to reconnect with you. There were a lot of other conservative justices that you could have said, okay, you know, let's try somebody else. And it wouldn't have been the first time a president did that. But you stuck with Kavanaugh during his darkest moments. Why? Well, for one thing, it would have been very unfair to him, if you think about it. He's a highly respected man. What the Democrats did was disgraceful. Uh, these uh, 
things happened that just came out of the wind. There was no corroboration. There was no anything, Janine. This is a high-quality, brilliant man. He'll be a phenomenal Supreme Court justice. And it was my honor to stick. And I know that. A lot of people told me that. They said, well, we'll switch. You'll never get anybody like this. This is a very, very outstanding person and individual with an incredible family. And it would have been very unfair to him. What they did was disgraceful, what the Democrats did. And you saw that group with Blumenthal, who falsified his service in Vietnam and a terrible mayor of Newark, New Jersey, Cory Booker, and, you know, the whole group, Diane Feinstein, who, in my opinion, leaked the papers. Uh, it was terrible what was happening and what was happening. What? Very unfair. So I did stick to me. Yes. And I'm very All happy. Right. And I you did. know, Mr. President, you have a very uncanny instinct. You have a gut sense of things. And you were very disciplined uh, after Christine Ford came out and the left was going wacky. But there was one point where you pivoted at a rally in Mississippi uh, just a few days ago. You went off script. And some people said that you were extremely unkind uh, to Christine Ford. But what, what was it that got you to pivot from your restraint of about her and to fight for Kavanaugh at that point? Well, there were a lot of things happening that weren't correct, they weren't true, and there were a lot of things that were left unsaid. And I thought I had to even the playing field because it was very unfair to judge. Now I can, you know, very nicely say Justice Kavanaugh. Right. And, right. Uh, it was a very unfair situation. So I even the playing field. And once I did that, it started to sail through. He was treated well, very, very unfairly, Janine. And, and Mr. President, you know, when you say it started to sail through, even the Washington Post, I'm going to repeat that, even the Washington Post, top of the fold today, talks about the fact that when you went off script and you went after Christine Ford, saying nothing that wasn't already true, talking about her uh, memory failures regarding the fundamentals of her assault, they said it was a turning point to victory, that when you did that, you turbocharged the momentum behind Kavanaugh. When his fate was most in doubt, I mean, there's no question that he has to turn around uh, in the country and recognize that what you did was instinctive, it was guttural, and you did it, and it, you won. Well, I think it was a very important moment. It was a, a very big turning point, as the Washington Post was actually, shockingly, uh, they said something that was very positive. <laughs> and I'm very proud of it, because we have a very... We're going to have a great, great justice of the Supreme Court for many years. And I fought hard to make sure that he got on. And you're going to see what happens. You're going to see how great he will be and will become. I have no doubt about it at all. All right. So coming out of this, should there be consequences, Mr. President, to those people who promoted falsehoods? When you look at someone like that lawyer Avenatti, who, uh, you know, the allegations that, that he was promoting when he brings out this alleged victim were so preposterous that they dissipated on their own. Um, should this person be held uh, 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 for the, the falsehoods, not just in terms of grievances with the uh, Bar Association, but even beyond that? Well, he made false accusations about me on another matter, totally false, a joke, when uh, just a disgrace that they're able to do it. I'd love to see our libel laws get toughened up so you could take people and sue them. Exactly. But he made... Ex uh, the same thing, totally false statements. You look at what happened, and yes, I think they should be held liable. I would say they should ha be held to the highest standard. You can't go around, and whether it's making up stories or making false statements about such an important position, you can't do that. You destroy somebody's life. And yeah. there were many, many false things that were said about a very fine man and would, would have destroyed his family if this didn't happen. And it all came together in the end, and people realized it was false accusation, false statement. It was really something very interesting and actually very nice to see, because he suffered, Janine. That was really yeah. unfair. I watched that very closely, and he suffered with false statements made about him, things that never happened. 
Did the Democrats make a tactical mistake that worked to uh, Republicans' advantage, unfortunately, with Brett Kavanaugh as a sacrificial lamb, who, who I believe, and, and I'm just going to say it again, that the turnaround was you in Mississippi. But did, that, did they make a tactical mistake and... Is their anger going to carry them to uh, the midterms in a positive way? Well, I think they overplayed their hand. I think they were very dishonest with the leaks and other things that they did. Even look at the lawyers representing certain people. They're right out of the Democrat playbook. They've represented right. others that are Democrats. That's what they do. How did they end up with all these lawyers that are always the same ones? And I won't even go into names, but I think they overplayed their hand. And I can tell you that the enthusiasm and the love and the, the, mm -hmm. the feeling in the Republican Party right now is higher than I've ever seen it. And you see Fantastic. polls that are going up like rocket ships, races that are going to be won by margins on races, frankly, that the Republicans wouldn't have won. And now they're leading and they're just better. We need more votes so that we can cut taxes even more so that we can do things that they will never do. They're going to open borders and crime is going to pour in. We want to have no crime. We want to have borders where you come into the country legally. You come in through a legal process and so many things. The enthusiasm for the Republican Party is the strongest I've ever seen it, Janine. And it happened all over the last two to three weeks. The panel is next, and tonight, it's two of your favorites. CPAC Chair Matt Schlapp, NRA TV host Dan Bongino, standing by live with their take on Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh and my interview with President Trump next. If you want America to remain a sovereign, great country, then you must organize, mobilize, register and vote Republican. We need more Republican votes. Joining me now with reaction to my interview with President Trump and his lively speech tonight to a huge crowd of supporters in Kansas political panel, a panel CPAC chair, Matt Schlapp, NRA TV contributor, former Secret Service, Dan Bongino. All right, Dan, I'll go to you first. You heard the president uh, in my discussion uh, with him. What stuck out in your mind? Well, first thing is that, again, Trumpism has been entirely vindicated. You know, Judge, the Iron Triangles dominated the GOP for years. The activist groups, the media, and the swamp. And Trump keeps continuing to beat the snot out of all of them politically. He just doesn't back down, and they're panicking. And you saw more of that tonight in this speech where he just ran up the score. And I love that about him. Uh, I got to tell you, I never heard that term, beat the snot. I mean, that's good for <laughs> Saturday night. What stuck out I'm in the I'm a Queens guy. It's been a, it's been a long <laughs> week, okay? It's been an exhausting <laughs> week, and I must tell you, I think all Americans, I really don't care yeah. what side you're on, have to say, you know, hopefully we can move on from this. Yeah. Do you think it's possible or is it not possible for the left in this outrageous display of anti-constitutional principles? Okay, so here's the deal. We are split. 50-50, as we all know, is an incredibly close presidential race. It's going to take the American people looking at these crazy people who are literally right outside this window and saying, I don't trust them with majorities in Congress for us to be able to make a bigger difference and get these larger Republican majorities in Congress to push the Trump agenda. It's in the hands of the American voter. Well, Dan, and what do you think the Republicans have to do to maintain the enthusiasm or the anger? Well, I think we're on the House side. It's, it's a toss-up right now if we hold the House. But I think on the Senate side, uh, there's no question these ruthless, disgusting, filthy attacks on Kavanaugh have galvanized Republican voters. And I think we actually stand a pretty darn good chance, Judge, of picking up a few seats in the Senate, even flipping but some. Why? Florida, where I live, he's in a lot of trouble, Nelson. Uh, but why just the Senate and not the House? The because in the House, you have... Voting. The no, no, absolutely. But the way you have with gerrymandering, you have these suburban districts that we've had a tough time with. There is, we, yeah. can't, we can't just completely dismiss the fact that Democrat anger is real. It's just that I think Republican anger at a statewide level, well, we may have, it may be enough to counteract it on the Senate look, side. We may we, have trouble with some of these districts, though. 
If we do well enough in these Senate races, we could pick up two to five Republicans on the Senate side. If we do well enough in these races, we have a good chance of holding on to that House majority. This Kavanaugh confirmation puts the, ho the Republican House majority in a much better place. You know, uh, uh, the president tweeted on Ted Cruz. Um, in, in, this was in August. He said, I'll be doing a major rally for Senator Ted Cruz in October. I'm picking the biggest stadium in Texas we can find. As you know, Ted has my complete and total endorsement. His opponent is a disaster, and he goes on. So the president ain't slowing down, Dan. He, you know, I honestly, I, he gets energized by these rallies. I've seen him in them, several of them. Uh, he's not going to quit. No, and Judge, you know what, what? I'm glad you brought this up because this, this just mutes another one of these dopey liberal attacks against the president <laughs> that, oh, he's so small and petty. Really? Ted Cruz and him went at it in the primary. He's doing a rally for him. Him and Susan Collins have not been friends, Judge. Everybody watching tonight knows that. What did he do today? Came out, Susan Collins did a great job. It just goes to show how petty the media is, not the president. Yeah, and it goes to show that he w he's definitely going to follow through on getting the deals done. Yeah. And finally, as as you know, as we look at this going forward again, uh, is is this day going to galvanize the women? Absolutely. Look, the Democrats have lost their double-digit advantage with women. Women actually looked at what happened with Brett Kavanaugh, and they felt like there was something unfair about the process. And don't worry about Republicans not having the enthusiasm. If we had gotten this wrong and lost on this Kavanaugh vote, I would be depressed because we would also lose big in November. I feel the opposite today. All right. Uh, Matt Schlapp and Dan Bongino, thanks so much for being with us tonight. And we'll be back in a moment. For years you watched as your leaders apologized for America. And now you have a president who is standing up for America. A big night indeed for President Trump. And finally, as the president indicated in my interview with him just a few minutes ago, First Lady Melania Trump returning and scheduled to arrive home this tomorrow morning from her diplomatic and humanitarian visit to Africa. Take a look at some of these pictures. Uh, and uh, although uh, I, I'd like to, she made a comment that we should focus on what she does and not what she wears. But sometimes I can't help myself. Don't forget to pick up your copy of my new book, Liars, Leakers, and Liberals, The Case Against the Anti-Trump Conspiracy. It's a, it's a bestseller. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Janine Pirro, advocating for truth, justice, and the American way. And congratulations to Associate Justice of the Supreme Court, Kavanaugh.